Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Friday, December 6, 2013. I'm Gigi Arnetta, and here's what tops our news tonight. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, China is making big moves towards a world offensive. Plus, Army Colonel vows to pry guns from our cold, dead hands. Then, Fukushima hysteria in Japan leads to fascism. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. The Chinese media is bragging about building a Death Star on the moon. A report in the China Times brags that China's launch of the Long March 3B rocket earlier this week is all part of a plan to make the moon some kind of Death Star which the People's Liberation Army could launch missiles against any target on Earth. Experts in China are wargaming how the moon can be transformed into a deadly weapon. Like the Death Star in Star Wars, the moon could hypothetically be used as a military battle station and ballistic missiles could be launched against any military target on Earth. Various weapons testing sites could be established on the moon. And noting that the launch of the Long March 3B rocket is the start of a more ambitious program. Recently, China flexed their military muscle by sending warships to the edge of Syria and also putting a surveillance ship in the Hawaiian waters. Our warships rival U.S. Navy brags Chinese PLA. Now, shortly after the PLA's Death Star report, they started bragging about how their warships could trump our U.S. Navy warships. Amidst tensions with the U.S. over the disputed islands, the Chinese PLA is bragging that its aircraft carrier combat task force can be just as good as the U.S. Navy. The report heralds that their battleships will transform its firepower to a level, and I quote, very close to a U.S. aircraft carrier battle group in its heyday. Beijing has plans to supplement the combat force with a further two destroyers, an assault nuclear submarine, and one supply ship. Beijing has announced that it has begun mass producing and delivering its J-15 carrier-based multi-role fighter jet. Following China's announcement that it would impose an air defense zone over the region, Washington called Beijing's bluff by flying two unannounced B-52 bombers through the area just days later. So they've called each other's bluff, and now Biden seems to be compromising to China. Now, the establishment of a new air defense identification zone has, to state the obvious, caused significant apprehension in the region. And I was very direct about our firm position and our expectations in my conversations with President Xi. The United States has a profound stake in what happens here because we need and we are and will remain a Pacific power diplomatically, economically, and military. That's just a statement of fact. Beijing announced that it expected all commercial and military aircraft flying into the zone to provide it with advanced warning about flight plans, be constantly available for contact by Chinese authorities, and maintain clear identification procedures while passing through the ADIZ. Failure to follow any of these rules, the Chinese said, will elicit defensive emergency measures. So for all the progress that the U.S. has made condemning the Chinese in this decision, Joe Biden has gone over to Asia and said, well, we should really compromise. And that really shouldn't worry you because, of course, Chinese hackers hacked into the different weapons defense systems that we have. Remember, back in May, the Chinese hacked into more than two dozen major weapons systems whose designs were critical to U.S. missile defenses and combat aircraft and ships. So this should really build your confidence in Joe Biden and the U.S. All right, moving on. Mysterious China-themed city proposed in New York's Catskills. U.S. immigration officials are considering a proposal from Chinese investors to create a multi-billion dollar development in New York's Catskills called China City, raising concerns among critics about the potential cost to U.S. taxpayers. And according to one analyst, the possibility it could be a stalking horse for the Beijing government. The mysterious proposed development appears to be a step beyond the types of ethnic enclaves scattered throughout the U.S. cities like Chinatown sections of New York City or San Francisco. The 600-acre China City of America is located far outside New York City in upstate New York's wetlands and is a meticulously planned project, calling for family housing, a college, and student residences, among other structures. In addition to needing a federal approval, it would likely need a host of state and local permits before ground could be broken. So the Chinese have already said that they want the world to consider building a de-Americanized version of the world. This right out of the Taipei Times, they say it themselves right here, a de-Americanized world needed after U.S. government shutdown. So the Chinese, 
they want to make sure that they can de-Americanize and also have this new world order come into existence with one financial system. And one more thing. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. Yes, Obama, the Chinese invested in that. And Joel Skousen came on the Alex Jones channel and talked about the Red Dawn scenario takeover of the U.S. Since 1900, the Western globalists have been attempting to build the two major enemies that will attack us someday, and that is Russia and China. They brought them to power. They created them. That doesn't mean that they control them, however. They've actually created independent enemies, and there's no shortage of them around the world. And, you know, Satan is involved in inspiring evil men to rise up. A lot of people say, why can't we have peace in the world? The reason we don't have peace is because there is systematic evil in the world that will always continue to rise up. But we are having to deal with systematic evil within our own government, what I call the dark side of government. It has built Russia and China to basically tear down the fabric of the West and other liberty countries around the world, letting the globalists come in with an alternative solution to save them from communism, but ultimately not destroying communism, reserving for them the last final attack upon America, which I think is coming in, in uh, probably eight years at the earliest, maybe 10 years, uh, but clearly into the next decade, because Russia and China aren't ready to attack the West. The entire political theater about China wouldn't dare attack us because we're their lifeblood of commerce isn't true at all. China, in fact, intends to take over the West, run its own new world order, impose its dictates upon us, and actually own the markets, not be hostage to the Western markets, but own the markets. In order to do that, they have to take out U.S. military power. But one of the interesting things they intend to do is not attack civilian cities. And this runs counter to what has been revealed or allowed to be leaked by the official China news agency about the attack plans on America, showing attacking major cities in the east and seeing that fallout rise into the, west, uh, into, into the east. But really, that's for blackmail purposes, uh, Alex. In other words, uh, the threat of attacking city has been used for blackmail to scare them into compliance or to, you know, there's a, there's a variety of purposes prior to war, but I happen to know that the Chinese and Russian military plans do not call for attacking civilian population centers, but only military centers. And then saying to the West, now, if you want the rest of it, you know, then I suggest that you, or you need to, uh, to succumb to our level of control. In other words, they want to blackmail the West into submission. Well, the West knows about these plans. They know that there'll be a military decapitating strike on, the, on America someday. And, but they intend to, to deceive the Russians and Chinese, thinking uh, we think you know we can blackmail us into submission by not submitting to that blackmail. They'll, in fact, pull out an entire... A group of uh, secret weapons that they've been building and prosecute the war, but they won't do it in the name of the United States. They'll do it in the name of this new militarized globalist government that they'll talk us into the necessity of in terms of prosecuting this war. Japan has fallen back into fascism after 68 years. A senator yelled out, this is the way the reign of terror begins. Then other physically restrained him. The Empire of Japan surrendered on September 2nd, 1945. 68 years later, Japan has fallen right back into fascism. Despite large protests outside the Japanese Senate, compromised of more than 7,000 demonstrators, so outraged was opposition lawmaker Hirokaza Shiba in the committee meeting Thursday that he rose from his seat and shouted, this is the way the reign of terror begins. His fervor led to his fellow lawmakers having to physically restrain Shiba as tensions in the meeting reached fever pitch. The secrecy bill passed today, and here's what another Japanese senator had to say. The path that Japan is taking is the recreation of a fascist state. I strongly believe that this secrecy bill represents a planned coup d'etat by a group of politicians and bureaucrats. Just like the U.S., Japan is responding by banning journalism. The Guardian notes whistleblowers and journalists in Japan could soon find themselves facing long spells in prison. 
for divulging and reporting state secrets, possibly including sensitive information about the Fukushima nuclear disaster. One editorial writer said it's a threat to democracy. It can be used to hide whatever the government wishes to keep away from public scrutiny. The justice minister refused to rule out police raids of newspapers suspected by breaking the law. Indeed, the number two government official said last week that protest equals terrorism. Washington, for its part, has long supported stronger secrecy laws in Japan. Abe plans to create Japan's version of the U.S. National Security Council. So while Japan slides into tyrannical control, the U.S. is already there. This week, the DHS has stopped vehicles at ferry crossing checkpoints, which are at the Bolivar Peninsula in Galveston. This clip shows the drivers being forced to exit their vehicle to allow the DHS officials to inspect both their trunk and hood before permitted to pass the checkpoint. Uh, where are we, Paul? We are on Galveston Island. We were going to take a ferry over to Bolivar Peninsula. It looks like we got diverted over here into some kind of uh, roadblock check, checking for drugs. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who they are. So you take this ferry often to get to the other side of Galveston Island. To, to, the, to the next across the bay, and I've never seen this kind of deal. We were just randomly pulled over here. and Looks like uh, either TSA or Department of Homeland Security is now upping the border checkpoints. Uh, what's going on here, man? This is America. I don't want to be searching my truck. Yeah, you better get ready for it. All right, what's going on here? Uh, it's a screening process. Screening? Yes. Security. Homeland Security. Homeland Security. All right. All you gotta do is shut off the engine and pop through the window. How'd you feel? You just got your uh, self checked out. Didn't feel too good, did it? Well, at least I was able to keep my clothes on, so that's a <laughs> that's a good thing. No body cavity searches. No body cavity searches. They just searched underneath your uh, vehicle and inside of your back of your truck, and then uh, made you pop the hood. The footage was shot at the ferry crossing between Galveston Island and Bolivar Peninsula, emphasizing how the federal agency is now setting up checkpoints between internal waterways that have no relation to immigration. There's no other option for motorists than using the ferry because it's the only way to cross the waterway between the two locations. The Department of Homeland Security continues to expand the number of checkpoints it operates throughout the country, primarily via the VIPR program, Visible Intermodal Prevention and Response. Now, this is for the Transportation Security Program, and they say that this is to prevent terrorism. So the question is, what kind of terrorism are they looking for at a place where people travel through mainly to go to, go to their job or go home? Because the Bolivar Peninsula is not a very big place. So what are they really looking for? Are they looking for anything, or are they just trying to get people conditioned? Because it sounds like a bunch of baloney. And it doesn't stop there. Now at airports, you, you remember the report where they had the pods that you have to go into? We reported that on Infowars.com. But now it looks like it's going to be contagious. It's going to be all over the United States. They're talking about doing this. And of course, I guess we're going to throw out the Fourth Amendment out the window. A new TSA directive that mandates airports provide security for terminal exits is likely to lead to the installation of more detention pods, which have the capability of subjecting travelers to biometric scans. Airports across the country have sued to block a new TSA directive that requires them, starting January 1st, to begin guarding exit security doors as passengers leave flights and head for baggage claims. Now, the travelers have expressed confusion at the necessity of the pods, saying, I don't understand those doors. What are they supposed to do? It slows everyone down. And yes, the pods do have biometric and object-detecting capabilities, meaning in the future, Americans could face yet another stifling level of security simply to leave the airport. A video demonstration of the devices show a user biometrically scanning his fingerprint before he's allowed to leave the containment area. So since when do Americans need to have a containment area? This is the USA, not Nazi Germany. So stay tuned till after the break. We're going to have Jakari Jackson join me. He's going to tell us about more tyranny. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. 
And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support, 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick, it has really good caffeine in it, it has a good clean wake up that lasts for a long time, doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth, it's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And now Jakari Jackson joins us with a report about a Lieutenant Bateman who says he wants to pry your guns from your cold, dead hands. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bateman had some chilling words in a recent Esquire article. When referring to the Second Amendment, Bateman said, quote, we will pry your gun from your cold, dead fingers. Well, Mr. Bateman, I never knew Charlton Heston, but I'm sure if he is still alive today, he would give you a single warm finger. Bateman went on to say that the only guns he would allow Americans to have would be black powder muskets, double barrel shotguns, and bolt action rifles with magazines that hold no more than five rounds. Well, let me be the first to thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Bateman, for your supreme generosity ahead of the ATF's National Firearms Act and also the Undetectable Firearms Act, both coming to a head next week. This is a way of affecting tiny groups of interests that, that don't really get enough like national attention to make anyone mad. Uh, the, the same thing is kind of happening with the, with the Undetectable Firearms Act, but the Senate is using it as an opportunity to, if, if possible, inject whole comprehensive new ways of, of mandating and, and regulating how we make guns. And while we do have constitutional sheriffs and oath-keeping members of our military, guys like Bateman do exist. Now, Evan, I've come to the knowledge that not everybody in the military feels the same way as you do. You know, you said you have a good majority, 60-40 or so, you said. Uh, but we have this, this graphic we're going to show our viewers. I know you can't see it. But this is a graphic of a soldier who definitely does not share your views and opinions. He's saying you don't join to say I refuse. Maybe you've seen this. I'm not sure if you have. Exactly. But he says, uh, you know, stop yeah. making your signs and get the F back to work. Yep. What do you think about that? Um, the That one right there, there's, there's a a blatant difference between blindly following and loyally serving, and that guy is a blind follower. This is the kind of the mindless order following I've personally witnessed, as law-abiding citizens have been arrested for carrying legal firearms. Yeah. There you go, firearm. Any device designed made to adapt to expel a projectile firearm. through Keep the reading. barrel. Keep, Keep reading. reading. Energy generated by that substance. Keep, uh, Keep reading. reading. Don't mumble. Any firearm made have integral part folding knife blades. Thank you. Let's see. Thank you. you. Got quiet Thank there, you. Sergeant. Therefore, Sorry, yeah, I did there. notice that you uh, stopped reading out loud. Can you tell us the part that you were reading? Yeah. Uh. And why? They say turn in your guns to stop the school shootings. But the school shooting that they never want to talk about is Kent State, when members of the National Guard indiscriminately opened fire on students. Yes, some of them were throwing rocks. Some throwing rocks prompted the military to open fire on its own citizens. But you say not everybody in the National Guard is like that. And I agree with you. 
100%, not every guardsman is a potential mass murderer. But why is it that every gun owner in America is potentially the next Adam Lanza, potentially the next Aaron Alexis? Why can I be given the benefit of the doubt? And they'll tell you, oh, it's because the police are better trained than you are. Well, tell that to the innocent bystanders that get shot by the NYPD every single year. Beyond the potential abuses of police and military, you have these gun-grabbing politicians who have the audacity to tell you to turn in your guns when they themselves are armed. In the spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will think, get right back to you. You'll get back to me? I know the urge to arm yourself because that's what I did. I was trained in firearms. I'd walk to the hospital when my husband was sick. I carried a concealed weapon. This is the type of mentality being taught in our schools, where constitutional law professors in the state of Texas teach their students that the Constitution is outdated and the Second Amendment needs to be repealed. But it doesn't stop there. Kids are being suspended for playing with bubble guns and eating their Pop-Tarts the wrong way. The school took this so seriously that administrators even ordered that the five-year-old receive a psychological evaluation. And all of this is to say nothing of the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty. Police, military, in the United States of America, you need to ask yourself a very serious, very pertinent question. Is there any law, any measure, any demand that you will not follow? Would you confiscate guns if given federal orders to do so? Uh, you're asking me hypothetically. Yes, that's not going right. there. Would you? Again, I, I can't uh, even begin to guess what I would do. Bateman is only the latest to join the ever-expanding rogues gallery antagonizing the Second Amendment. Now, I know it's really cool to go on YouTube and talk about your chest rig and about your hollow points and all this and that, and it's fine if you want to have that. My issue is that's not going to stop the current legislation. You need to pick up the phone. You need to call a constitutional sheriff. You need to get on regulations.gov and tell the ATF you don't want these measures. If your mayor and your mayors to be are not a part of Bloomberg's gun grabbing group, make sure that they don't join Bloomberg's gun grabbing group, or you get a situation just like we have right here in Austin, Texas. I've got a proclamation on behalf of the mayor and city council that we want to present, but I want to say a couple of words, um, and I'll be brief. First of all, to the gentleman that's dying for attention, uh, someone needs to inform him that there is no gun ban currently, but because of the work that we're doing here today, we will make your side legitimate shortly. People call us every day. They email us every day. They ask, I hear what you're saying, but what is the solution? You are the solution. We can't do everything. Sheriff Matt can't do everything. The Oath Keepers can't do everything. You have to do something for yourself. Call these people, email these people, show up at their offices, let them know that you mean business. And by meaning business, I mean with words and thoughts and ideas and positive legislation. If we can have a revolution of ideas, we can have a revolution without having to use our guns and bullets. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Jakari, thank you so much for being a part of the program tonight. Tell us about this guy. Well, I'll tell you, Gigi, I'm actually in a pretty bad mood right now because I look at this guy who's trying to take away my guns, and it's somebody different every single week. It's like when I was a kid and I used to watch the old Batman cartoon, and it'd be the Joker, then it'd be the Riddler, and it'd be Two-Face. I'm like, you know, I don't think Batman can go out here and fight these people every week, but every single week in real life we have a new villain coming to take away our guns. If it's not Feinstein, it's Joe Biden. Now it's this guy, and if it's not him, it's going to be the moms next week, and something after that. So yeah, let's take a look at this guy. This is an article from Paul Joseph Watson. Colonel who vowed to disarm Americans works with Homeland Security. Now, as usually, this is the guy who said he wants to pry your guns from your cold, dead fingers. This is a quote from this gentleman. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bateman. And this is a man who, you know, he says he'll allow you, you know, if he's in charge, he'll allow you to have a bolt-action rifle with no more than five rounds. He'll allow you to have a, a uh, muzzle-loaded firearm. He'll allow you to have a break-action shotgun, but that's about it. And he says, if you don't work for the government, if you don't supply weapons to the government, he doesn't want you to have a government. He'll put you out of business for your own damn good. This is an article 
Th these are quotes from his own article. You can see the full article on Esquire. We have our articles on Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson and also Kid Daniels. Uh, where do they get these people? I mean, what happened to our constitutional rights? And does he know the Constitution? I'm sure, like, like he, we, all these guys claim to be constitutional scholars, constitutional lawyers. We've put up the articles uh, Kid Daniels has in the past week about the uh, professor, I believe, is at Texas A&M, mm -hmm. constitutional professor, goes up in front of her class and says, the Constitution is obsolete. We need to get rid of the Second Amendment. These are the people, you know, Obama's a constitutional scholar. You know, he claims, I guess he knows enough about it. He can cut out what he doesn't want to be in there. So, yeah, I know what's in it, and I know what shouldn't be in there. It's pretty much their attitude towards it. That is insane. But it's not just, it's all kinds of guys. I mean, we have, uh, we have the things coming up with the ATF, the National Firearms Act. That comes ahead, I believe it's Monday, as well as the Undetectable Firearms Act, which concerns things such as uh, your printable guns. We talked to Cody Wilson about that earlier this week. And all this stuff is coming to the head at the same time. You have this guy and those two acts, those bills, and also you have the Sandy Hook anniversary coming up. So it's gonna be just a big conglomeration of everybody focusing in on guns. Why hasn't anything changed? You know, and that's gonna be the big deal. Why haven't we got these, these dangerous AK-47s and these AR-15s off the street? Because they're not, they're not involved in a lot of these crimes that are going on. I mean, most of the times these things are used in some type of defensive or offensive measure. It's, it's a, a menacing incident. Even if it's police, they aim their rifle, they aim their shotgun, and the guy gives up. These things aren't being used in mass shootings. And I know, yes, of course, we've had some right. recently, but that's not always the case. And what, now, I hear that they're also tr planning on charging for ammunition, like an insane amount yeah, they of Yeah, they want to tax ammunition, and this is something that's being kicked around. You remember also after the Boston bombing, they're saying, oh, we have to regulate powder now. So mm -hmm. if you want to make your own ammunition, they're going to come after that. It's any which way they can to track you, to regulate what you're doing. That's exactly what they're going to do. Well, maybe they'll take some lessons from Iceland, right? They yeah, I mean, Iceland, uh, you look at these other countries that don't have uh, these big, long uh, lists of deaths. You know, I, I believe Iceland wasn't the first officer involved shooting. Right, and they had in 2009 one homicide. Right. One. You know, because people, <laughs> they're, uh, they're trained in firearms, they're proficient in firearms. And I definitely do agree that, you know, if you do own a firearm, I think you should uh, seek some type of training or at least, you know, learn from people who are experienced. I'm not saying it should be federally federally regulated necessarily, but I think, you know, it is a good idea to invest in some training and some know-how. Well, and hopefully at some point our government will stop just handing out pharma like it's candy. And, you know, this problem. is the government. Meanwhile, they, they say we can't have guns here at home, but they'll give guns to Syrian rebels. They'll give guns to Mexican drug cartels and let them run amok. And then when, you know, they have all the gun deaths in uh, Mexico, then Obama goes down, well, it's our fault here in the United States because all these gun laws. I'm like, yeah, it's your fault because you gave guns to Mexican drug cartels. That's why they have so many killings down there. Right. And plus, the people don't have the uh, the proper arms to arm themselves. To defend themselves, yeah. sure. And the, I'm not going to bag on all cops, but a lot of them shouldn't really have a gun considering their Yeah, I mean, condition. we see these, these situations, and, you know, because the big thing is we talk about drones and maybe the police moving towards having drones soon. You know, some places already do. And they're saying, well, you have cops carrying guns. I don't feel comfortable with all these cops mm. carrying around guns. You know, like I said, I understand, you know, they're law enforcement. They need guns to protect themselves, but I need a gun to protect myself. We see the situations in New York last year and this year. Cops open firing on a single individual, and they're hitting everybody else around them. It's like that scene from Pulp Fiction where the guy nice. opens fire, and he shoots everybody except Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta. That's what these cops are doing in New York. This is crazy. Well, it's good to see you fired up, though. I'm, I'm yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jakari, thank you so much for thank being you, here. Thank you, Gigi. And stick around till after the show because Leanne McAdoo and Dr. Group are going to talk a little bit about improving your lifestyle. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. There is no question that we are under a biological attack with all the hormones that keep they're adding to our food supply and to the meat and dairy and now our water. But I'm speaking specifically about gender bending chemicals. Now experts around the world are concerned about what the effects are gonna be of, of these and they say that this is quite possibly one of the biggest threats that we are facing today. Now I'm joined in studio with Dr. Edward Group. 
He has been studying these kind of chemicals and their effects for multiple decades, and he is here with us to share not only a solution, but to let us know how we can avoid these altogether. So Dr. Group, I'm really concerned about these gender bending chemicals. I try to do what I can by avoiding bottled water, but it seems like they're everywhere. It's a major problem and it's been going on for a long time. I mean, we have a severe decrease in testosterone in males and we have a severe increase in estrogen in females and males. Basically what's happened with all these chemicals with the introduction of soy, in everything that we eat with the plastic residue, people cooking their meals in plastic, storing their meals in plastic. There's all kinds of other chemicals that react together with each other that create estrogen dominance in the body. So what we've had happen over the last at least 20 years is we've had an estrogen dominance, which means the body starts producing more estrogen in males and in females. Now in males, that means your testosterone levels go down, your DHEA levels go down, your growth hormone levels go down. So it's becoming a huge problem. I mean, we have right now two girls being born for every one boy being born. Mm. So what I wanted to do was let their own body boost those levels, growth hormone and DHEA, to bring that individual back up to that feeling of self-confidence. They can feel, you know, have good sexual relations with their significant other again if they want and bring them back to feeling energized and strong again, just like they were when they were 15 or 16 years old. So what I had to do is I had to look at individual herbs and how to put those together that would balance out or actually help their body. We're not giving them testosterone, giving them growth hormone, giving them DHEA. What we're doing is finding a specific proprietary blend of different herbs and compounds that when, when they take that, it goes into their system and it actually stimulates the body's ability to regulate or produce those hormones. So it's not as if we're giving them testosterone every single day, but their body is naturally producing it. And we've seen tremendous results in just a few days with athletes, with um, husbands and wives calling in. As a matter of fact, I have a lot of wives calling in saying, what are you doing to my husband? What's my husband taking? This, you know, this kind of activity hasn't happened in, you know, 10, 15 years. And the, the good thing is, even though it's a male vitality, it's still safe to take for females as well. So what the whole goal is to bring you back to feeling the way that you felt, self-confident, feeling good about yourself, that you were when you were 15, 16, 17 years old. For a male, that's very important because that's when they have their energy, that's when they have a good sex drive, that's when they're not having erectile dysfunction issues like we have with 90% of the males over 40, 45 years old out there. Mm -hmm. You have everybody on Viagra, which is a toxic compound if you keep taking it over time. This is a natural solution. So what I recommend is any male that wants to improve their quality of life, whether it's athletically, whether it's sexually, whether it's just more self-confident, whether it's more energy that they need, if they want to burn that belly fat that they've accumulated, Alex Jones, InfoWars, has the exclusive contract for this super male vitality. I recommend all the males or the females that just want to help their husbands out Go to InfoWarsLife.com and purchase a bottle of Super Male Vitality today. You will not be sorry. Well, Dr. Group, I do know that as we get older, our hormones definitely fluctuate, but it seems that this whole process is almost accelerating now that we're under attack constantly from the plastics and the hormones being added to the dairy and the meat. And that's why I took some of this a little earlier today, and I really like the taste of it. And frankly, I recommend single guys out there, married men, Pick some of this super male vitality up at the InfoWarsLife.com today. Your woman is going to thank you. Hi, I'm InfoWars reporter Leanne McAdoo. And as we age, it is inevitable that we may experience a slowdown in vitality, energy, sexual drive, and overall well-being. The reality is that in addition to the natural aging process, the experts admit that our body is continually being hit with a barrage of what's known as gender-bending chemicals. And that's just for starters. 
So avoiding these chemicals has always been really important to me. And that's why I was so excited to speak with Dr. Edward Group about what's really going on, specifically to find a solution to the root issue. And what I found was that as experts around the world are now revealing, core hormone levels in many men and women are dropping, but especially men. Testosterone, growth hormone, DHEA, all are being affected. Introducing InfoWars Life Super Male Vitality. Fusing herbs and other essential ingredients to help support your body's natural hormone balance. Developed by Dr. Edward Group and produced at a highly accredited natural products manufacturer, Super Male Vitality is designed to aid the body in ways that may support normal testosterone levels in men. Focus on improving your sexual vitality with the stimulation of libido and sex drive. Deliver hard-hitting benefits while completely free of GMOs, gluten, and harmful ingredients. And it's all made here in the USA and supports our operation. Single men, married men, I recommend that you get a hold of InfoWarsLife.com Super Male Vitality today and your woman won't be disappointed.